sick, right? I'm actually pretty excited about this one. Today, I'm in a 2017 Dodge Charger Daytona 392. And you know what? Just for the hell of it, let's see what that looks like in the dark. I gotta tell you when I first got in the car and I heard that exhaust instantly I felt like I loved it now uh, you hear the motor it's got that grumble to it is a 6.4 liter uh, v8 you know Hemi and uh, you hear that exhaust mostly though and uh, I just I loved it and then uh, you know you kind of mental check yourself because I'm, I'm coming out of you know I've had uh, a couple of vipers and um, I've got that Z06, which actually I'll touch on here in a second, but um, I, I had to mental check myself and say, you know, it, it's just not loud enough though, or it's not it's not what I'm, I'm expecting or necessarily wanting to hear, but I knew my first instinct was that I loved it. So there, there is something about it, and you have to understand that I am in a four-door sedan. So, and I knew what I was getting myself into. So you kind of let you, you gotta tell yourself that uh, this is not that kind of sports car experience. So for what it is, amazing. I mean, it just sounds excellent. Experts say that this car has 50-50 weight distribution, which is incredible. Um, the comparable Charger versus Challenger, they say the Charger is actually faster, um, which, you know, I don't know. But uh, I gotta say, if it is, it isn't. If it is 50-50 weight distribution, whatever the case is, the car is extremely fun to drive. Very nimble given its size. I've had to do a couple U turns, and I'm thinking, you know, just by the feel of the car, your brain actually tells you, I am not going to make this U turn, and, uh, and this car can do it. So uh, it's just, it's incredible. Uh, not a lot of road noise either, so it almost gives you that luxury feel as well. Of course, everything in here is leather wrapped, has the suede seats, so you're, you're really really hitting all the car sensors if you will in terms of uh, you know what more could you possibly ask for but there is something I could ask for and it's not just me it's everybody since the damn charger came out if this car were only a two-door now it may have changed me purchasing a car 
I don't think so though. Of course, I wanted something where I could fit somebody in the back seat. So if it's two door, I'm back to square one. Probably not being able to fit somebody comfortably in the in the back seats. However, I can't imagine what this car would look like in a two door. And I do know that uh, I want to say about 10 years ago, or you know, when the first the Charger first came out, uh, West Coast Customs did a show um, where they turned the Charger into a two door, and even um, even he said that the car belonged in a two-door body and, and everybody around the world I'm sure agrees with that this car just it looks better in a two-door not to mention my opinion only looks way better than its uh, two-door brother the Challenger uh, I just that's one reason why I didn't buy the Challenger I didn't consider the Challenger it just does not look appealing to me sitting inside of it um, I'm sure the car is great and everybody loves a car however and then you can get it in a stick Ooh, I ran something over but uh, you can get it in a stick. And I told myself, I can live without a stick, uh, as hard as that is to, to say, or even try to convince myself. However, I can't live with driving an ugly car. So uh, the Charger it was. Just the audible, the car sounds excellent. Um, the smell, who doesn't love new car smell? But uh, I think my brother made the comment, it smells like shaving cream. It doesn't smell like new car smell. Um, you know, you have a combination of the suede and the leather, uh, and it's just a different uh, aura to it. Uh, and just and it's also it's just very comfortable. I mean, the steering wheel is just beautiful. I mean, it feels great. Uh, visually, it's it's just wonderful to sit in. I mean, you have, it is a charger, so it's got like that, that big bulky feel compared to like all the other sports cars I've ever driven or owned. Um, but again, you are on a four-door sedan, but just looking from a driver's perspective, I mean, huge gauges, you know what's a sports car. Um, the infotainment system is very nice, very easy. Um, it's laid out wonderful. You know, it doesn't hurt having uh, right around 500 horsepower. Um, now, some of you might be thinking, oh, no, I know the 392, it's 485. However, if I haven't already shown you, I'll show you after this, the, uh, the car came with a factory installed Mopar cold air intake and factory tune. Now I talked to a great contact from Dodge, uh, a retired engineer, I can't remember exactly what, but uh, but he was explaining to me that the cold air intake with factory tune uh, would add somewhere around 15 to 20 horsepower. I know that's on paper and what they expect, not dyno. I hope to have that done soon. Um, so we'll get, we'll get proper statistics on the vehicle. However, face value and for what uh, the experts are telling me 45 plus a quarter intake I should be running 5 to 505 so again you're getting everything with this car really into the meat and potatoes and, and really elaborate on some of the things that I touched on earlier so I'm only going to compare this to some of the other cars um, that Dodge has to offer actually more specifically the packages that Dodge has to offer for the Charger in terms of its competition in four-door sedans, that's up to you to decide. Uh, I think this is a great buy for the money and what you're getting, um, an excellent buy. But uh, so with this Charger, I'm not going to touch on the RT and the SXT and those. I'm going to touch more on what's comparable, um, specifically the Scat Pack, um, the SRT, and then of course this Daytona. So the Scat Pack. Everything's the same. I mean, you can get all the same options. Um, essentially, what you would be possibly losing is you go from a six-piston Brembo brake setup to a four-piston Brembo brake setup that's in the front. Um, you get different wheel options. So styling's 100% up to you. And on top of styling, um, the the decaling and, and uh, badging of the car. Um, Scat Pack has the the Bumblebee badging. Bumblebee is typically embroidered in the seats. Uh, the seats are nylon. Um, I don't know. I don't recall seeing a leather package. So that might be out there. However, most of the Scat Packs I did see, not most of all the Scat Packs I did see, were nylon seats. Um, so you're not going to get that. I mean, the Scat Pack is a little bit less expensive than this Daytona. Uh, even fully loaded, comparable technology for technology. Um, it is less expensive. Um, and I'll show you the MSRP of this car. And then there's the SRT. 
So the SRT, from everything that I've seen out there, the SRT essentially comes fully loaded. A couple of options, um, mainly like radar cruise control. I saw some without radar cruise control. I saw some, I saw some without um, blind spot monitoring. But from what I saw out there, and I'm talking dozens and dozens of SRTs that I was looking for or looking through, um, they all essentially came fully loaded. They're all leather interiors. So you are going to get leather. The SRT has a different steering wheel. It's essentially the same, except for the Dodge in the middle, says SRT, and it has the flat bottom steering wheel. Now it's not F1 style. It only, you know, maybe about uh, one fifth of the steering wheel, the very bottom, just flattens out, um, which aesthetically is, is nicer, but I don't know that you're really going to notice too much of a difference there. Um, and the SRT comes with a body painted spoiler. Um, and then they also have their SRT wheel. Now I do think that you can get that wheel on the Daytona. I don't recall ever seeing it on the Scat Pack. Um, so aesthetically, uh, that is an option for you. And of course you can always paint your own spoiler. Um, now the Daytona comes with everything that the SRT has, minus another feature. I've already mentioned the full leather seats. Um, I've talked about the steering wheel and of course the SRT badging, um, painted spoiler, but there's one other thing the SRT comes with that uh, really just sets it apart, but in my opinion, not worth the money. The infotainment system has another option built inside of it where uh, you kind of get this 3D exploded view of your car and has a little bit more customization towards suspension and different driving modes. Uh, it comes with one additional driving mode and um, a little bit more freedom with customizing the suspension. And that's a $5,000 option, that alone. Um, and I think the wheels are 1100 All said though, um, to go from a fully loaded Daytona like this one is, uh, to go into the fully loaded SRT, if you will, I think it was between seven and $8,000 in price point. Everything else is identical. So uh, my friend, the salesman, um, actually had to talk me out of the car because I was seriously considering, and I went to the dealership to buy the SRT. But when I saw them both side by side, when I went through the features, uh, I just didn't see the, um, in my case, it was a $6,000 um, price variance, um, only because of the wheel package that was on this. This isn't the base wheel. It also isn't the, um, what is it, the Gas Monkey Garage uh, wheel that they have, special edition wheel that they have for the Daytona. Um, and if, if I haven't shown you already, I'm going to show you here now the MSRP or the window sticker. All right, everybody, I appreciate you watching. That's gonna wrap up this take on the Dodge Charger Daytona 392. I hope you enjoyed the car just as much as I did. And actually, I'm pretty sure I enjoyed the car a little bit more than you guys did, but I do appreciate you watching. I got a couple other cars coming up, hopefully the end of this week, beginning next week, so stay tuned, and until next time.